This edict identifies Jesus of Nazareth as a heretic and a blasphemer. This season on The Chosen. There are those for whom this will set off a series of events. My followers won't understand. Lazarus, come out! I guess you're not holding back anymore. I can't. I'm out of time. See season four of The Chosen in theaters on February 1st, starting with episodes one, two, and three. Get your tickets now at thechosenriseup.com. The idea of transits. The idea of transits. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Stars Baby Do It. You've got Sierra and Mimi here, and we are talking about transits today, which is very exciting because it's something that we talk about a lot, especially on our second podcast over on Patreon. Go follow us over there. We'll get into it. But Transits are yes. some, a huge part of astrology that we mention, and we're going to finally have just like an episode telling you what that is and what to look at. Yes. Yeah. Transits are like the way, once you get to know your chart really well, transits are how you get to know how you're feeling today, according to the current planets. We call it like the astrological weather report because just like, you know, you the weather changes every day it's going to affect you differently it's going to affect you depending on what kind of person you are what type of weather you're used to essentially transits are the astrological weather and we do a mm -hmm. astrological weather report a transit of every single week over on patreon that's what we do so when you're listening to this episode and if you find that transits sound really exciting for you and super fascinating that's literally what our second podcast is over on patreon and speaking of patreon we had an announcement over on patreon that we're going to share with yeah. we already shared with our patrons but we're going to share with the public now so you may notice martha's not here right now martha has taken on a very exciting opportunity in her marketing work and so she's going to take a little six month hiatus while she explores that option it just got to be too much to be able to explore that option and really give it her all and also commit to all the work that this podcast takes on. So um, before any of y'all think that we like had a big fight, we did not. We support her fully. We're so excited for her. Like the first week at this job has sounded so, so exciting. So we're really happy for her. Um, and yeah, so there's going to be a little six month hiatus. You may, she might come on for a couple future episodes. I think there's already one recorded for the future that we're pretty excited about. Yes. So if she's on, that's awesome. But for the most part, we're cheering Martha on on her marketing journey right now. Yeah, it's very exciting. And all of our patrons already know because it was Martha who announced it over there. Like we went through the whole emotional roller coaster of this and it's not an easy decision mm -hmm. for anybody. So we are supporting her so much. We're so excited for her new adventures. And if she, you know, she might be popping on. And like Mimi said, we already have uh, an episode, at least one episode that we've already recorded that you'll get to hear mm -hmm. her again. So we're excited for her and it's going to be us for the next six month period, bringing you all of the astrology greatness from the stars that made me yeah. do it all that fire and earth man <laughs> <laughs> yeah we we lost oh, our like ready. airy water <laughs> counterpart so you're yeah. gonna get passion and practicality <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so that's that. That's the announcement. But yeah, go go check us out on patreon.com slash the stars made me do it. And uh, also there's transits and tangents is the second podcast. It's called transits and tangents. And you can actually look it up on Spotify and um, listen to it on Spotify, all that stuff. So you don't have to get the whole new app, whatever. And then you can check us out on Instagram and TikTok. We are at the stars made me podcast. Heck yes, we are. And on that note, yeah, transits. It is something that I feel like when you get into astrology, we often start off with, uh, from a personal perspective, oh my gosh, okay, I'm a Sagittarius sun. 
what's a rising sign? Okay, I'm a Sagittarius rising. What's a moon sign? And then, you know, you use yourself as a test subject in general. When you start to get into astrology, you're using yourself mm-hmm. as as the means of exploring how, you know, every piece of astrology, because you're your best test subject, you can, you know, oh, it's me who has a Sagittarius Venus or a Gemini Mars. And so that's when you're really looking into the astrology of a person. And if you get a birth chart reading, that's what you're looking at. But for transits, essentially, you're taking your individual chart, like you are who you are astrologically, and then you're applying what's going on currently to that. And that's why we call it a weather report because it's how you as a person, your like individual birth chart is affected by what the planets are doing in real time. Yeah. And unlike when you read or look and watch a weather report on TV for rain or clouds, these are actually accurate. So you know what? (laughs) We're always going to know what planets are where. (laughs) We will know years in advance, decades, hundreds of years in advance where the planets are. So uh, it's even more reliable. You know, it's crazy how like, I mean, we both got into like deep into astrology, right? Like around pandemic times. And upon reflection at all of the, you know, the astrologers that were looking into the transits coming up on 2020. I remember looking back at some of the videos that people had made and it was like, (laughs) everything was suggesting a shit show. And it's so funny and funny, but fascinating that you can really look Mm -hmm. at major events. What were the transits going on? We'll get into it. But you know, what was going on at your moment in life? How like I met my husband and we were both having, uh, you know, Jupiter in the, the transits was right on top of our Jupiter in our birth charts. You know, like there's really cool things that you can find that, wow, that's what was going on in this major moment, good or bad or whatever in my life. And you can really then I I don't I mean we can bring a predictive element to it but it really is like a weather report we can we can predict the energy you know energy can show up in different ways mm-hmm. like intensity can show up intensely good intensely intense you know but we can predict the intensity based yeah. on the planets so that's what like you know the energy part of it that you can look into when you're looking at the transits Yeah, it's not so much like oh I'm going to meet this significant person on this day but we could see that the energy is like showing, oh, wow, your heart is much more open to receive loving energy from an outside source. And that means it's sort of, you know, there's so many different ways that that can present itself. But one of those ways could be like, okay, meeting my future partner or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that is also one way, like, we'll we'll have to get into it in future episodes. But one thing I know so many people have heard of is your Saturn's return. And there's also like different returns for different Mm -hmm. planets. But your Saturn's return is essentially when Saturn, the transiting Saturn, the Saturn in the sky at this moment is on top of your natal Saturn. So you can, you can tell by looking Mm -hmm. at the transits, oh, that's what it means. My, my Saturn return, because the transits right now are, I have that my Saturn and actual Saturn are right on top of each other. And you can have it for different planets too. Like my Saturn, which is at the end of Capricorn has been super activated by Pluto in the sky in the transits right now that has been at the end of Capricorn for forever. So even though it's not my Saturn's return, I can tell that, wow, there's these intense transformative Plutonian energies that are constantly activating a part of my chart. And so you just get, you know, you get an idea of how those energies play together. We're going to get more into that, but you really can, can, I don't know, map it out, mapping the sky in comparison to yourself. Yeah, like knowing what's going to be highlighted for you within, you know, the next three month frame, like a framework of three months. That's what I work with when I do transit readings. I like to look at just three months because otherwise, like there's so much that happens in the span of three months. I used to do eight months and I was like, this is too much. I can't fit this into the time frame that I have my recorded session in. So looking at just the next three months, knowing, okay, Mars is going to go into Scorpio and then it's going to go into Sagittarius. I know that I have Scorpio on my fourth house. So that means that Mars will be transiting my fourth house. My my fourth house is going to be activated by that ambitious, fiery, impulsive, confrontational, active or action oriented planet of Mars. And so that's sort of how you can feel into those energies. And we I 
like to start out, like if you're just beginning with aspects or not aspects, transits, and you're feeling overwhelmed, I suggest just looking at conjunctions. Like Sierra had said, Pluto is in Capricorn, so it's going to be conjunct her moon or her north node. But you can also look at aspects like trines. So if Sierra had something in Taurus, then we would know that that current Pluto in Capricorn could be forming a trine to her natal planet in Taurus if she had one. That kind of thing. Or similarly, you can look for the aspects like a square or a sextile. And if you want more information on any of the aspects, we've done an episode on major aspects, minor aspects, aspect patterns. We've We've done it a lot. Yeah. And I would say if you're interested in transits, it can seem overwhelming. And it, I mean, it totally, everything in astrology can get overwhelming if you let it. But like when you break it down yeah. smaller, it can be less overwhelming. But I would say that Mimi's suggestion is great as far as conjunctions. And if you're unclear as to what conjunction means, what trine and square means, I would really take a pause and familiarize yourself mm -hmm. with aspects like in our aspects episode, like we talked about, because you really will have to have some form of a grasp of that in order to fully be able to dive into transits with getting any quality information out of it, because it is one of those things where, okay, I could know that this planet is on top of this planet, but if I don't have any idea what that means, then where do I go from here? So definitely familiarize yourself with aspects in general before diving into transits. Mm -hmm. And I love that suggestion of looking at conjunctions first, because that's the that's the, you know, the easiest thing to spot. And we'll also get into this yeah. with the reading of like, how do we know what to, what planets to look at? How do we know all of this? But, you know, we also have a planets episode. So go ahead and check out the planets episode, but each planet has a different speed in which it moves. So you can see how certain transits are going to last longer. And so it basically is closest to us is going to go really fast. Farthest away is going to last longer. This Pluto business on my Saturn has been going on for years at this point. The moon <laughs> moves every two and a half days. So you're going to have a transit, like you're going to have that emotion that's going to be passing me over your moon. At least once a month, you're going to have the moon and your moon are going to be conjunct. So you can look at, okay, the moon's moving really fast. That's the fastest transit. And then you go to Mercury and then you mm -hmm. go to Venus and Mars. And so those are planets that are going to be transiting for I mean, longer periods of time than the moon, but shorter periods of time that you can, like Mimi said, map out a couple months ahead. Okay, Mars is in Libra right now. And I know that for this mm -hmm. period of time, it's going to be activating this part of my chart. And then we're going to be moving into Scorpio the next month. So you get an idea of the, the distance away from us. The planets are going to take longer to go through those transits. Welcome back to Please Don't Skip This Ad for our awesome Patreon group. <laughs> we would love to have you guys as a part of our community. We are chatting with people on our Discord. We have a whole second podcast over there, and it's a really, really good time. Yeah, if you like the vibe of the stars, maybe do it. You'll definitely love Transits and Tangents, which you can find on Spotify and sign up through Spotify. It takes you directly to Patreon. There are three tiers that you can choose from. You could be a pop star for just three bucks. It's basically a cheap diner coffee where you just get access to the Discord community and you can chat with us at any point. We're there day and night. It's a lot. And then you can get episodes five days early every week too. So you can hear the episodes that come out on Sunday on Tuesday every week. And then you can also just support the firestorm, which we would love. Our second tier is the rock stars for six bucks. Consider this like a Starbucks coffee. Again, you can join us on discord. You get early access, but you also get exclusive episodes every other week. So you get 50% access to all of the second podcast. And then our last tier, the third tier, it's our superstars, the most popular. It's only nine bucks a month. This is like your favorite local coffee house with all the bells and whistles. You get the discord, you get early access and you get a hundred percent of the exclusive episodes every week. You can also guest on an episode if you want. Uh, where we do some analysis, which we're basically talking about on Discord all the time anyway. We have such a fun Discord community, such a fun Patreon community. It is really like 
all the all the behind the scenes chat that we get to do. We talk about fun, different analysis that maybe we'll do one day on the podcast. But we also get to know you. And that way, when we're going mm-hmm. over the transits of the week and we're talking about the astrological weather report, it's not just about us, it's about you. And so if you're interested in how the planets are actually affecting you on a personal level, then this is really the place to join us. Also, we just, <laughs> it's a lot of chatty good times and it's a little, it's a little more silly. And so we got super education of what's going on and we have silly get to know us really like we're a community over there. So check us out. We'd love to have you. And we do have free trial going on if you'd like to dabble and see what it's like. Yeah. Seven days free trial. So go join us on patreon.com slash the stars made me do it. And now back to the show. And I think we should touch a little bit on how each planet will affect your chart in different ways. Because for the example that I had earlier with Mars, when it enters Scorpio, going to be activating my fourth house, I gave a lot of different adjectives of the way that I'm going to be feeling in the fourth house. So I might be feeling um, emotionally impulsive or emotionally frustrated or my inner world. I'm going to feel really motivated and ambitious and have a lot of energy when it comes to my inner world or my home, my family life. But say if I instead had Neptune going through that fourth house, this would be a time of deep inner reflection instead. It wouldn't be so outwards like Mars is more outwards and externalized. Neptune is much more internalized and it's much more spiritual. I would I could feel this by having a deep connection to my inner world, by um, possibly wallowing in emotion a little bit or exploring my spirituality and how that helps me grow on an emotional level. Um, it could mean finding uh, home and family through a spiritual means, finding a spirit family in that way. So each planet is going to affect you very differently, like just that example, Mars and Neptune. And like Sierra had said with the moon, the moon moves so quickly, right? And especially if you're a person with a uterus, like you are going to be feeling the waves of the moon so vastly throughout the entire month. So you might feel like, wow, I don't have any major planets touching on my Venus, But I'm really feeling like I am really focused on being creative. I really feel in tune with my relationships right now. And maybe just because no other big planet is touching on it, just for that span of like a day, the moon could be touching on your Venus or trining your Venus, something like that. So if there's nothing big that you're noticing, but just today you're feeling this certain way, that's a great time to look at where the moon is and how it's affecting you. And just like every two weeks, if you can't start if, if this is too overwhelming and it's too much to look at, just start by looking at the full and new moons every two weeks. All right, this full moon in Taurus is going to be in my 10th house. So I know that I'm on this journey of exploring my career and my reputation and how I present myself to the world, things like that. And it's really putting together all the vocabulary that we've already talked about in so many of our episodes to create a language or to create sentences and really be able to communicate through astrologies. Yeah. And in addition to the aspects episode that we, you know, definitely recommend listening to, we also have two episodes, like a part one and part two on houses because houses Mm -hmm. is a huge part of reading transits because that's the where, you know, that's where it's showing up. We can get the energy of the what and the how from the planet and the sign, but the where is the house going on in your chart. And I was just thinking when you were giving that example of Scorpio fourth house for you, and I've got Scorpio Mm. 11th house. And I'm thinking about how my big project, my magical book club, my online book club that I started was a Scorpio season project. And I've got Scorpio in the 11th house which is large groups of, you know, (laughs) interconnected people on on the internet, you know, and I created this online community in a very 11th house way about a mystical, magical topic, very Scorpio during Scorpio season. And it really was, it was focused on a personal project and it's the sun was in Scorpio, you know? So I think that that, that is just a transit to look at. And I love the suggestion as well about looking at the full moon 
and the new moon, because it does give you like, okay, twice a month, (laughs) I can look at these concentrated Mm -hmm. energies. And I think that in general, that's, that's looking at the sun and the moon. When we look at the full moon, a full, a full moon, the sun and the moon are opposite a new moon, the sun and the moon are the same. And when you are looking at transits and you, you have a grasp on it and you want to start somewhere, look at where the sun is activating your chart. What house is it in? Is it making any aspects to anything? And look at the moon, the moon's going to move faster. The sun's going to be there for a month. And so we know as we're, you know, say we're moving into labor season, we're moving into Scorpio season. You see what part of your personal, you know, your birth chart is going to be highlighted there. And you know, for that next month, those type of themes are going to be highlighted. What's the moon doing today? I find it really exciting transit wise. I always like my moon is in Capricorn and I love paying attention to the days that the moon is in Capricorn because then I know that my moon is extra activated. But Mm -hmm. I will also say that me personally, my most efficient energy that I ever experience is Libra sun Capricorn moon. Because for me, my mid heaven is Libra. I am lit up when it comes to working career, public sphere, like energy. And then my moon being activated with that Capricorn and actually that square that that's forming between Libra cardinal and Capricorn cardinal, where there's like some friction of, Hey, we got to get things done today. I feel so accomplished after those days. And like, you'll start to notice, oh, hey, when the moon is in this sign, oh, sorry, when the moon is in, yeah, the sign, and then where's the sun and how do I function differently? So you'll, you'll, I don't know, be able to take advantage of certain days because you can anticipate the energy that's going to be present for you. Yes. Yeah. Another tip for, um, especially when you're beginning is because it can be so overwhelming to be like, all right, here's my natal chart. Let's plop the transits on there. Like, where do you start? That I think can be extremely overwhelming. So actually what I do when I, um, I mean, unless I'm really curious, I'm like, let's see what I'm going to be experiencing over the next week or so. But what I prefer to do is reflect within myself. What am I feeling right now? Why am are I'm feeling really like, so for example, I'm going to use my chart as an example, because I am going through so many transits in the simplest form, like conjunctions. I have a lot of conjunctions going on right now. I am feeling so overstimulated. I'm feeling very anxious. I'm feeling just like very sensitive to all my senses. And when I look at what I think of as the planets that rule the senses or the nervous system, I think the moon and I think Venus. And lo and behold, we've got Jupiter, the planet that expands and makes things way bigger on my planet Venus. And so that's just a simpler way to look at transits like, whoa, what am I feeling right now? And then looking at the planets and seeing like, okay, what is explaining this for me? How can I see this in my chart rather than being like, let's look at the chart. And then make up situations because this isn't a made up situation. This is you. Like, like Sierra said, you're your test subject. You know best what you're experiencing or what's going on in your life. So then to see in the transits, it being reflected, that's a really good way to like build up a repertoire of knowing, oh, when Jupiter transits this point in my chart, I've had experiences where I feel X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And it's so fun that you use that as an example, because my brain just had like a hardcore light bulb moment because so Mimi's example was transiting Jupiter on top of her natal Venus. And this summer, I remember I had a crazy moment of just overstimulation, crazy overstimulation. And it was transiting Venus on top of my natal Jupiter. It was that Leo time and thinking about like being overstimulated and And just by you saying that, I was like, wait a minute, I had a very similar feeling going on. What was happening at that time? And I completely remember it was it was the same two planets, but mine was natal, yours was transiting and the opposite. So it's so crazy and showing up in different ways because Mimi's example, this is Taurus energy. It's going to be a lot more sensational because it's Taurus, Mm. whereas mine was in Leo. And so it's going to be a lot more heart space because it is like Leo, which is ruling that part. And so you have, you can then dive into the specific details of that planet, of that sign. We both, we both experienced a similar type of 
sensation, but then you get to look yeah. even farther into it to get more details of, oh, it's Taurus though. Taurus is the earthy senses. Leo, Leo is fiery and, you know, hearts, heart chakra area, you know, so you then get to yeah. find more information from there. And you know what, this is when you get to ha start like having a lot of fun. Like when we record transits and tangents, I whenever there's a Mercury Jupiter aspect, I'm like, Oh, fun. I love this. Like you start to see two planets together. And like, what's their relationship together? How do they push and pull between each other? How do they play with each other? How do they butt heads with each other sort of thing? Because you start to say, oh, okay, so Jupiter and Venus, this is how one way that it, they can express themselves when they're a unit. And similarly, like I also have Neptune conjunct my Mars, both at like 26, 27 degrees of Pisces. And so now we get to explore like, okay, how do Neptune and Mars work together? Well, first mm. off, my Mars is already in Pisces. So I kind of already live with this energy. But Neptune is just bringing in its own sign, just doubling down on the intuitive nature, intuitive action, um, maybe being a little hesitant to take very impulsive action especially when it comes to eighth house themes like uh past your fears joint finances decisions stuff like that and seeing how that shows up too and then you know there are just so many different ways like different relationships you can play with because anybody listening might actually be experiencing a neptune i don't know like a neptune mercury experience where neptune is bringing a lot of spiritual uh consciousness a lot of expression through their spiritual connection to the way that they express themselves through their words through writing maybe this is a good time to write poetry you know it just gives you so many options to explore and play around rather than it being such a hard and fast rule of this is what neptune and pisces is supposed to mean because it can mean so differently depending on it can mean something so different depending on what you have at that point in Pisces. Yeah. And if we go back to like, even just starting to focus on the sun and the moon and you look at all of your natal placements, because every season the sun is going to be going over a different part of your chart and mm -hmm. and every month the moon is going to be moving through all the parts of your chart. And so you start to see, okay, when there was that sun and moon uh, conjunct on my Mars, this is the energy that I was feeling. And so then, oh, now I see that Venus is here. So I know what the sun and moon feel like being there. Now, it's not going to be so different from Venus because I do have that like emotional kind of playground area, but it's going to be much more in a creative way. It's going to be maybe it will involve finances. Maybe it's going to have, you know, a relationship aspect to it. So you then start to apply the the different characteristics of the planet that is yeah. transiting and and like Mimi said you then get oh I love when these two planets are forming this relationship going through the transits you start to really feel that yes. and and it is a way where again the whole reason why we love astrology is to help understand ourselves is to help put you know to put understanding to things and I think it it always it it's not a, an excuse, but it gives us with this understanding, it allows context. us to, yeah, it gives us context. We can put our finger on something and be like, oh, you know, the reason why I've been going crazy recently is because Mars is right on top of my like Mercury. And I've just been saying the thing. <laughs> I've just been saying mm -hmm. the thing because I've been really yeah. agitated and it's right on top of my Mercury and my Mercury and, and transiting Mars. They don't need any sort of translation happening right now. Let's it's go time. I said it. And then it's like, okay, so mm -hmm. now that I know that that Mars and Mercury is happening, I can use it to my advantage if I'm somebody who maybe often doesn't stand up for myself or be extra mindful when I am having a discussion, because I know that at this moment, I might feel extra prompted to get sassy. <laughs> so you can use yes. those yeah. to your advantage. Yeah, by knowing what's coming or by having the context, you can make decisions based off that. And that's where like you come to astrology being a tool. Like, I think 
societally or just like globally, astrology has not just become a tool to predict things, but it's become a tool to take care of yourself. And for me, like knowing, okay, this Jupiter is on my Venus. It's making all of my sensations and my stimulations so much bigger than they actually are. That helps me in the moment where I'm panicking or if I'm really anxious to be like, oh, this isn't that big, like reminding myself and giving me that groundedness again, because I know also that the transit's going to pass, which is the best part of using transits for self-care is, oh, I'm going through a hard time. I can look exactly when Jupiter is going to stop being conjunct these planets for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, thinking about, I had a really big event at the beginning or middle of September and It was right at the tail end of Mercury retrograde. That's also transits are where we pay attention to when planets are stationing retrograde or stationing direct. And Mm -hmm. so I could use that moment of, oh my God, no, I have this big event where I have to talk in front of a bunch of people. I have it (laughs) in Mercury, Mercury's retrograde during this time. And it's right at the top of my chart. Oh my gosh. But then I looked at the rest of the planets and I was like, we have a new moon happening and moving into, it was a new moon in Virgo. So sun and moon were in Virgo. And moving into a Libra moon during this event. And so I, my midheaven is Libra. My ninth and 10th houses are activated by Virgo and Libra energy. And so I was like, actually, this is the last day of Mercury retrograde. And everybody that I'm going to be talking to at this event is going to be internalizing all of the words that I'm sharing with them. And then it's going to go direct and they're going to be able to act on it. It's actually really great timing that this is happening during Mercury retrograde. So then it allows you to kind of remove some of that fear. And then also (laughs) as somebody who as an astrologer, knowing that I have a big event in Mercury retrograde, you bet I made sure that my iPad was extra charged and I had my charger with me and that I took the Metro to get there more than a half hour early of an hour early there than I would normally get, you know? So I, you take extra precautions during that time because you are so aware of how those energies could show up that you then use it to your advantage. Yeah. Just like when the weatherman says, hey, it's raining outside. You're like, "Okay, maybe I won't wear like a mini skirt. Maybe I'll bring some rain boots and an umbrella. Or if you wear that mini skirt, you you just like you got to you got to own. You know what you're getting into. You know what you're getting into. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That being said, weatherman's probably wrong. Anyway, I don't know why I have so much beef with weathermen, but they're just I know I'm noticing all the time. Anyway. So another thing that we kind of touched on is when a planet that's transiting the sky changes signs, pay attention. So also note like what element it's in and what mode it's in. So this helps us sort of navigate, okay, we're going past conjunctions here. So for the example of Mars being entering Scorpio, I know I have planets in Scorpio that are going to be activated in that Martian way. But I also know that I have other water placements and we know that water trines to water the elements trying to each other. So I know that Mars transiting Mars is also going to be forming a trine to my Pisces placements. Or I also know that I have Taurus placements, which are opposite to Scorpio. Mars is going to be forming oppositions to my Taurus placements. Yes. That's how you can kind of integrate all, all that you know about aspects. Yeah. Going from elemental and mode. Again, I feel like, I feel like we just need to make a list of all the episodes that you can listen to. <laughs> To help I know, with right, transits. At this point. <laughs> because we have an elements and modes episode and that essentially it goes through all the earth air fire water what that means what the signs are and then the modes which is cardinal fixed and mutable and so you can start to tell the aspects that are going on like oh there there was a period of time a couple months ago where there were so many signs sorry so many transits in fixed signs that me, me and Martha were feeling it hardcore because they have so many mm. fixed placements. Whereas I have the majority mutable and cardinal placements. I wasn't as affected by those transits as they were. And you can see that like the the weather report is the same for all of us, but my natural mm-hmm. state is not somebody who's overly activated by fixed transits as opposed to people who have a lot of natal fixed placements. And then it's my turn now with all the crazy things that have been happening in mutable signs because I've got so much mutable energy that I, all of my mutable placements have been really activated by the mutable transits. And so that's another, you know, it depends on the lens in which you view astrology. I view things in element and mode 
And so it really helps me mm-hmm. to think in that way where it's like, wow, currently in this moment of recording this, Mars is in Libra and I'm realizing my Mars and Gemini, like they're communicating right now. They're in a trine. You know, those are like Mars and Mars. So what does that feel like? And actually I need to think on that. What does that feel like? <laughs> I, I'm definitely <laughs> moving a lot right now. So. <laughs> Yes. You know, it's, it's motion and it's sass. I've been very sassy. So like, I feel like that, (laughs) that definitely comes to play. And so you then start to think of, like Mimi said, oh, something's, you know, happening in a water sign. And even if I don't have that water sign, I do have water signs. So it's going to be trining those water signs. What is that going to feel like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something to note too, when you're noticing like, oh, elementally, these are connecting, those are going to be easier transits or things like, oh, great, I can take advantage of this, or this is being presented to me on a silver platter, essentially. Whereas when things are connecting by mode, these are most likely squares, which means that you're going to be pushed, you're going to be feeling a little tension to the point where you're pushed to find solutions, or you're pushed to take action. Yeah. And again, that goes back to like, just knowing the aspects. Another yeah. tool that I really like to bring it back to basics um, and and to not overwhelm yourself with so much information um, because it's not super basic, but there is something called a perfection year, which again, surprise, surprise, we have done an episode on that you can check out. Um, but I literally, even as my math brain, I cannot figure it out for the life of me. I have a printout of a, of a perfection year uh, wheel so that I can always know what age is this person and what perfection house or what house is being activated this year. So for me, I'm 29 years old. And at 29, you have a sixth house perfection year. And then there's something called the Time Lord. You look at the sign that's on that house, which for me is Capricorn. And the planet that rules Capricorn, we know is Saturn. So for me, I If I wanted to really bring this down to basics for the year of when I'm 29, personally, me as a Leo rising when I'm 29, I pay attention to what Saturn is doing and how Saturn is affecting my natal chart and just looking at that one planet. And if there's anything that you can do and you only want to look at one planet a year, that's the planet that I suggest looking at just to bring it down to basics. Yeah, there there's like there's endless possibilities with transits. It's just so great. Oh, yeah. You know, like that is I feel like that's on a very personal. I mean, it's all personal. But if you are really focusing on that perfection year, what is this energy coming up for me this year based on that perfection year, which again, check Mm -hmm. that episode out, then you can really just okay, it's me and Saturn this year that's what we're focusing on. Or if that's not at all yep. how you, you know, dive into astrology personally and you just look at it like a month ahead. All right, what's Mars doing? What's Venus doing? Let's look at the personal yeah. planets and 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 just check out get a date on when the Oh my gosh, what can I not think of the word? Personal planets and the farther away planets. See, are the astrologer I cannot remember what generational social planets outer planets outer planets it's such a basic word yes (laughs) innies and outies (laughs) the outer planets um you know oh hey this is changing signs like for me with all of my crazy i have so i have a capricorn stellium i've got so much in capricorn when pluto finally moves out of capricorn pluto is intense Pluto is an intense planet. It's transformation. It's excavation. It is really, you know, he's grandpappy Pluto. It's like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) if you're new here, check out Patreon if you want to know what we're talking about. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We've got daddy Saturn. We've got grandpappy Pluto. Anyways, Pluto being in Capricorn, as soon as Pluto moves into Aquarius, I'm going to get a breath of freaking fresh air because it has been years of my Capricorn placements being activated and it's heavy energy. It doesn't mean it's good or bad, but Pluto energy is intense energy. And so then you, it's going to exit finally all of my Capricorn placements move into Aquarius. And I know that that is going to like dramatically change how my Capricorn placements, which is like half of my chart, are going to be feeling, are going to be activated in different ways or finally (laughs) disactivated (laughs) in certain ways. And so you can look at those- Yeah, like an alleviation. uh, An alleviation, exactly. Guys, I'm so ready. I'm so ready for all of like the, I don't know, like uh, 1990-ish millennials with that like Capricorn stellium. We're going to get some breathing space soon (laughs) 
But anyways, that's for our trends and tangents. <laughs> Go ahead and check us out over there. <laughs> and that's like when you're on Instagram or on TikTok and you're scrolling and you see somebody who's like, oh, if you're a Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, or Scorpio, da 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 da, you're going to feel these things. You'll notice all four of those signs are fixed signs. So they're looking at a planet that is in potentially a fixed sign that's affecting those things. So you can start to understand why the TikToks or reels that you're being served are explaining how you're feeling and then you can relate to how it you know is personal to you and how it's affecting you and the thing with transits is people get so overwhelmed with them and when i did like a little q a or i asked instagram and i asked our patrons okay what do you want to know about how to read transits almost everybody was like just what the fuck i'm doing like i don't know what i'm doing and i don't know how to do it and it's because i think everyone tries to be an expert right away and to be able to read these two charts laying out next to each other and just understand what it all means but it's really just baby steps and like yeah. sierra and i have offered so many different ways that you can get just dip your toe in right okay look at the new moon look at the full moon every month once a month look at where the sun is activating in your chart right? Because it changes signs once a month. Similarly, you know, Jupiter is going to be in a place for a, essentially a year. Jupiter takes a year through a house or through a sign. So you can look at, okay, for the next year when Jupiter changes signs, I know this house is going to be activated in this Jupiterian way. All yeah. these little steps that eventually all add up to you actually knowing what the fuck you're talking about. But being a master is not the goal. Being an expert immediately is not the goal. It's just about being able to use it as a tool for yourself. And then eventually you do get to these predictive moments where you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I had uh, Saturn on my Mercury and I realized I had a really important work discussion or at a really important business meeting where I had to use my words and communicate effectively. And that's a predictive moment right there that you that you do get access to and you realize you've gotten there without even like really trying to be there. Yeah. And the thing that like, whether you get it from us as a, a Patreon source where we go over the transits every week or whether you are just looking them up on your own and diving into it on your own, when you have certain I don't know, when you have this information at your disposal and you're just paying attention to it, things also tend to pop up. I just remember at the end of 2021 realizing, oh my gosh, at the end of 2022, Mars is going to be in Gemini and it's going mm -hmm. to go retrograde. And I am somebody who natally, my Mars is in Gemini and it was retrograde when I was born. And this is not something that happens that often to have Mars in Gemini retrograde. And I was, and this has just been a personal planet, me and my astrology journey with myself. I've been really exploring my Mars and Gemini energy, my retrograde Mars energy. That's been something that I've personally been diving into really deeply. And then I had this revelation that, wow, next year, at the end of next year, there's going to be Mars Gemini retrograde. I don't know how that's going to show up, but I know that it's going to be monumental mm -hmm. because it's been something I've been focusing on, because it's Mars, which is how I do things, because it's Gemini, which is this energy of just it's it's brain power, it's it's writing power, it's and it's part of my movement, intelligence and and but basically the action. And I was thinking about how incredible that time is going to be and kind of you know, let it sit for the, the beginning of 2022. And then I, I had a life changing experience at the end of 2022. I had, I ended up going on a trip to Egypt. It was this, it was a life changing experience for me. And then I thought back, I was like, oh my gosh, this, when I learned that Mars was going to be retrograde in Gemini, I knew based on my natal planet, based on what Mars does, based on the sign it was in, based on the retrograde energy, I knew that this was going to be big. And then, I mean, I can't even explain how big it was. And so you then start to, when you're paying attention, that wasn't something that I was actively every day, you know, tracing Mars and what Mars was doing and paying super attention to how every single day was. But I had an idea of, wow, that's going to be a big moment for me. Noted, you know, fold mm -hmm. that page and we'll come back to it when it comes around. So it also gives you things to look forward to that it might, it doesn't have to be in the next week and the next month. It could be, wow, that's going to be a big time. And you just get those yeah. kind of predictive moments that can be really, really exciting. Yeah. And 
on the other side of it, like go retroactively. You have lived many years of life and you know when there have been really big points in your life, really big events, really important things that change the course of your life. Look at those transits. I, I remember looking at the um, day that my grandmother passed away, which was a very big moment for me when I was a teenager. And I remember looking at the transits and seeing just how and why it affected me on such a spiritual level, even when I didn't have spiritual beliefs at that time. And so looking retroactively, knowing how the outcome of things too, knowing how it affected you, then seeing how those transits played out and what, you know, what the plan was according to the, the planets in the sky. Yeah. Major dates. You know, if you're married, looking at your wedding date, what was going yeah. on that day, you know, graduating or starting a new career, whatever those things are ch- pulling up that chart. And as far as literally, how do you read transits? The program that we use is uh, time passages. We have it, both of us have it on our phones and on our computers. The computer is a lot more extensive and and you can you know, worth it to me, but as a professional astrologer, it's obviously worth it. If you are really interested in astrology and you know that this is like a lifelong hobby or uh, in enjoyment that you have, it is an investment, but to me, it's so worth it. Yeah, it absolutely is worth it. And you can just display transits. You can display transits for right now. You can display transits and put in your own date and location and all of the things. And even on on your phone, there is a free version of time passages and there is a paid version. I I have the paid version. It's a one-time thing. I think it's <laughs> also bucks. have the paid version. <laughs> yeah, it's because yeah. you can put in other people's charts. I mean, that one I would say is definitely worth it to to pay thirty bucks yeah. for for the uh, paid version on your phone. But you can enter transit dates for you, for people in your life. And, and it'll give you an overview of what the aspects were and a little kind of horoscope of, you know, what those energies would mean then. And so that is one way that's the program that we use most. I know that there are also just online tools, but you Mm -hmm. would just look for, you know, you would be putting in your natal chart information and then displaying transits for a certain date. And obviously the date time location matter, but it is also transits or something that happened over a period of time. So, you know, you'll get an idea of, oh, hey, like a week before this date was when Mars entered Pisces and whatever that means. So that's yeah. the basic way in which you want to whatever that means. Whatever accurate. That means. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but it's whatever Mars and Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. So guys, that's kind of, you know, we set out not to make it a big comprehensive episode on how to read transits because we have so many other episodes for reference, right? If we wanted to do a full comprehensive episode, it'd be like six hours long. We'd be going through all the planets, all the houses, how it all works together, stuff like that. So if you are even looking to start an astrology course, but you don't know which one, I would strongly urge you to just like listen to all of our educational episodes. It really is like an astrology course. And if you join us on Patreon for as low as like $3, you can join our Discord community, ask us questions regarding episodes that you've listened to. If you have any questions or want clarification on anything, we really have like a full extensive astrology course that we are building up through this podcast. It is, it's like enormous. It's, it's so great. It's so great. And so if you also are like, where, you know, where do I even start? Uh, You know, we've got the back to basics episode, but as far as Mm -hmm. the episodes that are most going to align with reading transits, that's going to be aspects. It's going to be houses. And if you want to dive into perfection year, like Mimi mentioned, that's another tool, but really aspects and houses, and I will say Mm -hmm. planets as well. And even the back to basics archetypes, because then you really get an idea of what each sign represents the energy that it brings, because we have a tendency of thinking, oh, I know this Virgo, therefore this is what a Virgo is like. And that Mm -hmm. individual has so much more than just Virgo going on. So, you know, our back to basics archetypes is going to give you all of the, just the straight up archetype of that sign. So yes, that would be a great place to go to. One day I really want to create a playlist on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever I can, of literally all of the educational episodes in the order that we would suggest listening to them. Um, So if anyone out there is in the mood and has a lot of Virgo placements, reach out. Go for it. (laughs) And 
And as far as transit questions go, like Mimi said, it's the best place to get more in detail information as part of our community over on Discord. But also if you, whether or not you're a part of Discord or part of our Patreon, let us know what other information could be useful for reading transits. Because if we have enough questions that we can easily, you know, provide some pretty uh, just informational answers and everything to, we can always come back with some more info on reading transits. But I think that this overview should give everybody a great start. And then it's more of an individual approach afterwards. Yeah, for sure. And that being said, I really love the idea of the format of a Q&A episode, like any questions that you have about anything astrology related, that would be a really fun series to do, just like answering most frequently asked questions or, or even about your personal stuff like, hey, I have this placement and um, I don't know how this affects this, whatever. If you have questions about astrology, both personal or general, I'm sure that you're not the only person who has that question. So if you ask it and we get enough questions, I would love to do a little Q&A episode that would be so freaking fun so ask us your questions because i want to do that (laughs) (laughs) Uh, well so that being said thanks so much to everybody for listening yeah this was this was fun i I appreciate just like having a discussion especially because we both like approach transits i would say similarly but we both have different relationships to like how transits you know how we use them on a daily basis or you know on you know whatever on whatever basis so it's fun to discuss this and, and yeah, I don't know, just explore. And, and everything is individual. So, yes. you know, even if we have the same approach to transits, I'm going to be feeling it so much different than you're going to be feeling it just mm-hmm. for the fact that we are different people. So that is the coolest thing about it as well. That's guys, if you haven't noticed, we love astrology. So <laughs> yeah, we're real dorks for astrology. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, right. Well, Sierra, why did we talk about how to read transits today? Because the stars made us do it. 